Hi everybody, today we'll be talking about all the different resources available from the Humboldt County Library, even though our library branches are closed to the public due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, the Humboldt County Library serves all of Humboldt County. We have 11 service branches, the main one being in Eureka, and then we've got 10 other service branches that go all the way north to Trinidad, to Hoopa and Willow, and up to Garberville. We also have a bookmobile that goes to all smaller communities that have a need for a library, but not quite enough for an entire service branch. Also right now, if you've been to the Garberville, Garberville site, you've noticed that the building isn't there anymore. That is because we are completely rebuilding the Garberville, Garberville Library Branch. And so um, the library is still in service, however, even if the building is under construction. Uh, we moved the collection across the street to the DHHS building and um, we are offering curbside pickup, which I'll discuss in a minute there. And the bookmobile also goes down to Garberville uh, the first four weeks of the month to kind of assist with getting library materials out and working with the public. On an average year, the library branches are very, very busy. Um, we average about a little under 500,000 physical items checked out. So books, DVDs, books on CD, things like that. Uh, we have 45,000 items downloaded on Libby and Overdrive. Those are eBooks and audiobooks, And I'll discuss that in a little bit. We've had over a thousand library programs and that can be story times, lectures, classes, movie nights, those sorts of things. And um, on an average month, we'd have about 22,000 people coming into our branches. Um, so these statistics are from 2018, 2019, which was our last average year. Um, as we all know, 2020 was a lot of things, but average was definitely not one of them. And that was primarily because of COVID-19. So just like everybody else in the world, the library, Humboldt County Library was affected by the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, we closed our branches to the public on March 14th, 2020. And since then, our staff has been working on trying to find ways to take our services that we would normally provide and find new ways to provide them in a way that is safe, both to our staff and to our community. Um, our staff has been working the whole time. Um, we have changed our work setup, so we wear masks, we're six feet apart. Um, we've taken a lot of safety precautions to ensure that our staff stays safe. Um, and we've also changed some protocol in terms of how our materials circulate. So um, before when you would put items into book drop, we would just take them out the next day, check them back in and put them back into circulation. Now what we do is we take them and we put them into quarantine for seven days based off of the recommendations from the CDC. So um, you know we've slowly been adapting and just trying to find the best ways to help serve our community during this time. Um, and here are some of the ways that we've been um, adapting. So the first thing about the library is you need to have a library card. At the Humboldt County Library, there's actually two different kinds of cards you can get. Our first one is our e-account card. The e-account um, gives you access to all online services and digital items. So you can download e-books and audiobooks. You can access our databases and web programs. Um, and for that, it's a really simple, you just sign up online. Um, you cannot check out physical items, however. So if you wanted to check out physical items, like go to the library and get an actual book in your hands, you need to get a full account. To get a full account, um, you would need to have a permanent address in Humboldt County. And you also have to request an application by mail or by phone. So um, if you wanted to get an e-account, let me go ahead and show you what you do go to our website, which is www.humlib.org. And if you scroll down and click on connect with a librarian or get an e-account, click on this. It takes you to a form. You just click get an e-account. Say if you already have a Humboldt County Library card and put in your email address and submit. And what this does is it sends a form to one of our library staff members and they'll get back to you with a e-account library card number. And then with that number, you can just use that as your library card number to plug into other online services to access ebooks, audiobooks, databases, all of that. If you want an actual full library card, you would need to give us a call. Um, you can call any library branch and those numbers can be found um, on our website. 
if you go to branches and hours. And here we have listed all of the branches, their phone numbers, their hours. You can call any library branch, talk to a library staff member, and we'll work on getting you the form where we can either email you the form or mail you the form. You would fill it out, send it back to us, and then we would mail you your library card. That will give you access to the full account, which gives you access to all of our items. In that full card, you would be eligible for the curbside pickup. So curbside pickup is um, a way for you to get actual physical books, DVDs, books on CD from the library. Um, how we do this is you place up to four items on hold. You can either do that by calling your local library branch and talking to a staff member and we'll put it on hold for you. Or you can go um, put items on hold using our website and I'll show you that in just a second. Um, once those are on hold, our staff members will go and grab them from the shelves. Um, this includes items from other branches. So if you live in Eureka and you request an item that's in Hoopa, our Hoopa staff will take it, put it into a shipment to the Eureka branch and then we'll hold it for you um, so you can pick it up in Eureka. Once your items are available, we'll notify you. Um, generally, that's by email if you have an email account associated with your library account. If you don't, we'll send you a um, paper notice in the mail. And then all you need to do is just drive up to the um, the branch that has your items and you'll see a big sign out front that has a phone number. Give that a call and let us know that you're outside. We'll check out your items and put them on a cart. We'll push the cart outside, step back into the library, and then you are welcome to come up, grab your items and go back into your car. So it's a really nice way to, um, you know, especially if you are a dedicated paper book reader, you just, you're not into eBooks. Um, this is a great way for you to get some items. So let me show you how you can put an item on hold. Going back to our website. Okay, so here's our website. If you look here at the search bar for searching for items in our catalog, um, say you are looking for the stand. So it's giving us lots of things. So we'll go to title, narrow it down. Here we go, The Stand by Stephen King. Say you want this item. All you need to do is click Request here on the right-hand side. You put in your name, your library card number, hit Submit. This logs you into your library account. And then you can select which location you would like to pick up your item. And also, it also gives you the option of um, a date to cancel your hold. So for example, if you're getting a book for a book club and you can't get it, you need it within a week of the book club meeting. You can say, okay, if I don't get it by this date, just forget about it, I'll get it somewhere else. Um, if you don't have a deadline, just leave that blank and your hold will just stay on your account until it's fulfilled. Um, you can also always just call us at the library, let us know um, what you're looking for and we will get you your items. A new service that we have um, created is our grab bag program. Um, so curbside pickup is great if you have specific items that you know you want to get. You know exactly what the book is, you know exactly what the DVD is that you want, but sometimes you just not don't have a set idea of what you're looking for. So grab bags is a way we can kind of recreate that browsing action that you used to have when you're coming into the library where you just come in and kind of look at a shelf and pick something off. So what a grab bag is, is you would call and talk to a librarian and we'll just kind of talk to you about what you're looking for, what you like. Um, so for example, you're into mysteries, but you don't like really gruesome mysteries or you like a certain author. We'll just kind of figure out what you're looking for, what your likes are, what your dislikes are. And then our librarian will pick eight to 10 items. Um, we'll check them out to you and put them in a bag and then you can pick those up via curbside. So it's a fun way to kind of explore new titles, discover new works, and just kind of see what's out there. So right now um, for grab bags, you can get a grab bag by calling any library branch and just saying you're looking for a grab bag. Um, we are working on creating an online form that you'll be able to fill out online um, and it would go to our librarians and then the librarian would contact you to let you know when it will be available. 
Zip books and ILL books are interlibrary loan books. This is something that we've had for years. This is a, a staple to the Humboldt County Library. Um, these are two programs that will help you get books that we don't currently have in our collection. So our first one is our Zip Book program. This is a program, it's a grant from the California State Library that allows us to um, purchase books that have we don't have in our collection based off of a patron request. So um, for a zip book program, there are a couple stipulations. One, we can't have any, we can't have the book at any of our branches. It has to be under $35. It has to be out for at least a year. And what we'll do is if it meets all those criteria, we will order the book, we'll send it directly to your house. It comes as like an Amazon delivery. You read the book and when you're done, you bring it back to us and we put it into our collection. So it's a really great way to have more access to books that we may not currently have and also help us develop a collection that is responsive to what our patrons are looking for. Um, to request a zip book, again, you go to our website, which is humlib.org, and scroll down to the bottom here, you see this little zipper, request a zip book. This takes you to an online form. Um, and so it just gives you the criteria, what you need. You do have to have a um, full library account to request a zip book. So you would not be able to use an e-account. Um, and your mailing address has to match the mailing address we have on file for you. If your account is out of date, you just give us a call. We'll update it on our end. It just gives you the criteria, how to return your zip book. And then when you're ready, click on the zipper again. And it takes you to the form. You just fill this out, hit submit. This goes to a staff member, and then we'll let you know if we're able to order the book, if we aren't unable to order the book, what our options are, and also a date as to when it's going to be delivered. So this is a really just great way to find books that you wouldn't be able to find at the library normally. And our library loan or ILL is another great program that we have. Um, with a library card, you don't just have access to our collection, you have access to collections of libraries all over the country. So we can borrow books from other libraries if we don't have them. Um, this is great if you're doing any sort of academic study um, because we also have access to collections at universities and colleges. Um, again, this is something that you would request. Um, you can request online and um, you just talk to a staff member, let us know what we're looking for. We will look to see if it's available. Some items are not available if they're incredibly rare or um, just based off of what it is. But a lot of times we can get you what you're looking for. We can also do this for magazine articles. Um, usually we can just call the library and have them photocopy the article and send it to us. So again, it's another great way to get the items that you're looking for that we may not have in our library itself. Libyan Overdrive um, is a program we've had for years, but especially right now, it's been very um, popular. And it is a great program that allows you to get ebooks and audiobooks delivered instantly to your device right from your home. So you can get a book sitting on your couch, don't even have to get up. Um, it's really, it's fast, it's quick, um, and it's really easy to do once you get the app set up. All you need is a library card. And with this one, you can have a regular library card or an e-count um, and a device. So a smartphone, a tablet, you can also use a computer. Um, the items are downloaded directly to your device and um, you get them for three weeks. And really great feature is there's no late fees. Once that three weeks is over, it automatically deletes off of your device. You don't have to worry about returning it on time. There's no late fees. It's just gone and you don't have to worry about it. So Libby and Overdrive, these two kind of are used interchangeably. Um, and it's a bit confusing about these. So Libby and Overdrive are two programs that access the exact same thing. Um, a little history of the program. Originally when this was created, um, Overdrive was the original program that was created to um, lend eBooks and audiobooks through libraries. Um, and it was designed to work on a computer and um, it worked pretty well for that. But then as more and more people started using smartphones and tablets, they discovered that the Overdrive system just didn't work very well on those devices. Um, it was it's set up more like a database. It's a little more uh, 
finicky. You kind of have to do a little more clicking around. It's not terribly intuitive. And so what Overdrive did is they created a um, new program called Libby, which is an app to download. And it's just a more intuitive way to um, access the collection. Um, and uh, it's intuitive, it's a lot easier, um, but it, the, it does, it's the exact same thing. So um, the best way to describe it, I found has, is Libby is the elevator, Overdrive is the staircase. Two different ways of getting there, but they both get you to the second floor. Um, so for Libby, I re would recommend using Libby if you're on an Apple device, so an iPad, an iPhone, um, or an Android device. Um, and it's just a more intuitive setup. It really does kind of walk you through and ask you questions. For Overdrive, again, Overdrive will give you access to the exact same collection of books. You'll, you know, they're exactly the same on the, the book side. Um, for Overdrive, um, I would use this for uh, computers if you're going to use your desktop computer. Um, also, if you use a Kindle Fire tablet, you have to use Overdrive. Um, for some reason, Libby just doesn't work on Kindle Fire tablets. And so you would have to use Overdrive for that one. And this one is also just set up more like a database. And some people do find it um, easier to use. So it really just kind of depends on where you're at, how you um, process things, and um, give them a try. So if you try Libby and it's just not working for you, give Overdrive a try. And it may just be a better setup for you. So for Libby, um, to sign up, all you need is a phone or a tablet, your library card. And again, this can be a regular card or it can be a e-account card. And you need to download the app. So the app you would find on the App Store. Um, so Google Play, um, App Store. Um, so you would need to make sure your password is, uh, you have your password to get into your App Store to download the app. So the, the app is Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. Um, and you'll see this little face. That's the, the right app. Once you download it and open it up, it walks you through how to sign up. So the very beginning asks you, do you have a library card? You say yes. And then it'll ask you, okay, what library do you want to use? Search for a library and search for a Humboldt County Library. Um, with Humboldt County Library, there's actually a couple Humboldt County libraries out there. You want to make sure you do the one that's NorthNet Library System. Um, NorthNet is the collective that we belong to. Um, so we, along with uh, um, most of the counties in Northern California, have um, joined forces in Libby kind of to share resources so we can get the most amount of um, items available for our uh, communities. So NorthNet Library System, Humboldt County, click on that. Then it's gonna ask you for your library card number. If you have a, a physical card, the yellow library card, flip it over, that's the number that's underneath the barcode. If you have an e-account, it's gonna be the number that was emailed to you, that's your account number. You plug that in and that links you to the system and then you're in there. And from there, you can download ebooks, audiobooks. Um, again, it's super easy. Uh, you don't have to worry about returning them. Really great way to get your books. If you want to use Overdrive, go to our website and click on search for ebooks and click on library to go. So library to go, this is Overdrive. Again, it's the exact same collection that we have in Libby. You'll have all access to all the same books and audiobooks as you would if you used a Libby app. Click on sign in, select your library, Will County, and put in your library card number. And once you sign in, you're good to go. Um, these are really great ways to access books that are in ways that are safe. Um, and if you have any trouble logging in, it's just not working for you, you can't figure it out, call your local library. That's what we're here for. We will walk you through it. We, um, you know, we played around with it a lot. And if we don't know the answer, we'll find the answer for you. Um, another really great resource we have that is eligible with an e-account is our RB Digital, which are digital magazines. Um, this allows you to download individual issues or subscribe to magazines as soon as they're available. Um, and there's lots of popular titles available. So we've got The Atlantic, The New Yorker, National Geographic, all sorts of magazines are available. And it is a one-to-one -one 
translation of the paper magazine. If you look at the digital magazine, you're flipping the pages, you're seeing the advertisements, it's the exact same magazine as if you were holding the paper magazine in your hand. Um, and again, these items download directly to your device. So it's an easy way to um, get items to read right away. Um, and to get this, click on search for ebooks. Scroll down to digital, down, digital magazines from RB Digital. From here, you can create a new account. You'll put in your library card number. Um, you would put in some information and then it would get you right in there. Um, I already have an account here. So let's see if it'll let me log in. So once you have the account, um, you can browse the magazines. Here it shows you all the different magazines they have available. We've got Cooks Illustrated. Um, we've got Star and OK if you're into like celebrity stuff. All kinds of great ones. And then if you want to look at it, you just click on the plus sign. And you can click start reading. And here you go. Here is the magazine. And if you flip through the pages, like I said, it's the exact same magazine as if you were holding the physical magazine in your hand. Um, you can print off pages. So if you find something that you want to keep handy, you can print it off. Um, yeah, so it's a really just really good resource. I would recommend taking a peek at seeing what we have there and seeing what works for you. Uh, another feature that we have on our website is a lot of um, databases. Um, these are, uh, we had a lot of these for years that have always just been sitting on our website. They're kind of a hidden gem that a lot of people don't realize we have. Um, and also with the beginning of the COVID-19 um, pandemic, we also um, invested some money in some new services. So there's even more for you to discover on our website. So for these, let me go ahead and show you again, go to homelive.org. And if you click library resources, just hover over that and then click on articles and databases. And this takes you to a website that has all of our different databases and things listed. So um, just kind of going through them here, Masterfile, this is a great database of um, articles, journals, um, reports, um, all of it is uh, good quality information. Um, this is an EBSCO database, which is the same company that runs databases for colleges and universities. So, you know, um, it's a really good resource for quality information. It's great if you have anybody who's doing like a research project and it needs to find peer reviewed sources, um, this is the database that you would go to. Um, one of our newest ones is Mango Languages. Mango Languages um, is a way to learn language. So it's kind of like a um, Rosetta Stone, but for, um, for free. So what you would do is you would put in your email or your, and your password, or you can use Mango as a guest, click on that, Put your library card number in. And it's got all sorts of languages that you can use. Here's the most popular, but if you click on see all, you can see there are a ton of different languages you can learn. You can even learn Shakespearean English if that's something you're interested in. And um, let's see, let's say I wanted to learn Spanish. Click on that. It's got lessons, it's got reading, it's um, it's got all kinds of things. And so it's just a really fun tool to learn a new language, learn something new while we're kind of hanging out in at home right now. Um, we have JobNow and VetNow. These are great online tools for job seekers. If you're looking for work, um, you can polish your skills, put a resume together. Heritage Quest, this is a genealogy website. Um, it's an out a branch of ancestry.com. Um, so it gives you access to um, local records, census records, birth and death records. Um, it's a really great resource 
for those primary sources that you may be looking for to kind of piece together your family history. Children's automotive databases. Um, these are the children auto guides, the paper guides that um, are really popular with DIY mechanics. Um, you can go on here, type in what your car is and pull up the whole children automotive guide. So if you've got something wrong with your car, you can get an estimate on how much it would cost to repair. They've got wiring diagrams, they have videos. Um, it's a really cool resource if you're into tinkering with your car. Nolo Press Law Guides. Um, Nolo Press is a, a publisher that focuses on um, kind of DIY legal issues. Um, so things like if you're getting a divorce or you have a rental or you're starting your own business um, and they have these uh, guides that kind of walk you through the legal aspects of those items. Um, and all of those legal um, manuals are available online for free. So if you click here, it'll take you to, um, it's actually through the Humboldt County Law Library. And so we'll take you over to that site and then you just have to put in our state abbreviation, CA, and our password is HUMB. And that'll give you access to all of those legal manuals for free. Um, driver's Ed database, if you or someone you know is gonna take a, a exam for a driver's license, they go here, it's got the manuals, it's got the practice tests, it's a really good resource there. Um, we also have our California Digital New Newspaper Collection. This is historical newspapers um, from 1849 to 1911. Um, they've been scanned and um, and cataloged so you can um, you can just kind of flip through the, the newspapers or you can actually search by name or um, search words and kind of narrow down um, to find newspapers in this, between this time period. Um, some other, other I mean, we've got a lot here. Um, Medline Plus is another great website um, for medical information. So it's um, medical information that is pulled from uh, trusted institutions. So National Institutes of Health, National Library of Medicine. Um, it's good vetted quality medical information because it can be easy to find information out there that isn't accurate. So this is information that you know is accurate researched medicine um, information. Um, what's also really nice is it's in English and in Spanish. So it's available for both. So when you get a chance, explore this page. We've got a lot of great resources here for people that um, it's kind of hidden. So it's a um, good resource. And again, you can use a regular library card or you can use an e-account card to access all of these programs. Um, another uh, thing that we've developed over the last 10 months or so are online programs. Um, programs are always a really big part of our library from story times for kids. We'd have movie nights. We'd have lectures from local um, groups come in, classes, all those sorts of things, um, which we obviously can't do right now because we can't meet in person. So we've been working really hard on finding ways to translate those programs to an online um, format, much like this right now. We put them on Zoom, we have things available on Facebook Live, um, we have things available on YouTube. So um, just trying to find a way to connect with our community while we're all kind of sheltering in place and staying safe. Um, so right now we have story times and programs for children. We've got some online book clubs. Um, we've had a com uh, community events. And with these, you actually don't need a library card. If you don't have a regular card, you don't have an e-account, it doesn't matter. These are open to anybody. So um, even if you don't have a library card and you're interested in a program, come join us. We just wanna connect with people and um, get to talk to people. So for children especially, we've got a lot of story times and children's programs. Um, Every Tuesday at 11 a.m. on the Fortuna Branch Facebook page, there's a story time with Ms. Tamara. Friday at 11 a.m., we have a school age story time with the Arcada Branch. And with that one, they just ask that you call the Arcada Branch to get the, the Zoom login information. Um, and same with the preschool story time at 11 a.m. Also on the Fortuna Branch page, um, I think about once a week or so, the, they have a recording of story time that you can just, um, you don't need to be on at the exact same time that they're on. Um, that you can always just click on with your children and um, enjoy a little story time. Um, online book groups is something that we've really been focusing on the last um, couple months. Um, we've got our reading in place, which happens every Saturday, and this is a short story um, reading group. So if you like the idea of a book group, but don't want to commit to reading a full novel every month, um, this is a really great way of we, every week is a new short story, at most is maybe 10 pages, 
you read it and we discuss it. So um, it's a really nice kind of low pressure reading group. It's a fun group and we, we read all kinds of different fun stories. Um, our Friday afternoon book club, this is probably one of our longest running book clubs. They've been um, meeting for a couple of years now. And so we found a way to bring them online. Um, they meet every second Friday at 2.30 um, and uh, they read um, some really great novels. I think the next one they are reading is the um, Beekeeper of Aleppo. Um, so really fun group, really great discussions. I would check that out. Um, on the same page book club, this is a new book club that meets uh, in the evening. So the first Wednesday of the month at 5.30. And um, again, it's a really fun group, really great discussions. And I think our next um, book that we are reading is Luster by Lalani Raven. And then in Arcata, we've got a novel idea book club that meets on the fourth Thursday at 6 p.m. And then also the YA book club for teens that meets at the same time, but on a, a second Zoom account. So if you're interested in any of these, um, you can always just go to, again, go to our website. And um, calendar, if you click on that, it'll have all of our online programs listed here. And you can always click on this, more details. It'll give you all the information that you're looking for and as well as the um, where you can sign up to get the invites to the Zoom account. So for these programs, much like you had to do um, with um, this program, you sign up and we'll email you the Zoom link. And again, if you have any questions, just give us a call, call your local library and we can help you out, help you get signed up, give you more information, all of that. We also have some community events that we've managed to um, start or maintain during this time. Um, our biggest one is our Humboldt County Historical Society Lecture Series. This has always been a very popular program at the library. Um, and so we were really excited to, to be able to translate it onto um, Zoom. So it meets the first Saturday of the month um, and it's different historical researchers or just people with um, historical knowledge um, talking about different subjects. So since we've been doing it online, we've talked about things like um, the history of the Sequoia Park Zoo and the history of the railroads. And the last month we had one on interesting buildings throughout the area. So uh, um, Winema Theater in Scotia and different houses and the history behind the architecture. So um, if you're interested in local history, I would suggest signing up for this. Um, we have family literacy Zoom nights that's in conjunction with the Humboldt Literacy Project. And these are really fun um, programs for the family and usually involve singing and dancing and um, some story time. And it's just a really fun way to connect with your family and connect with the library and just do something different for the evening. Um, we also work the, the Sequoia Park Zoo. Um, each branch gets um, free library passes, their family passes. So you can have, I think up to four people on a pass for the month. Um, that gets you access free to the zoo. So if you are interested in going to the zoo with your family, um, just call your local library branch and ask if there is a family pass available and we'll check it out to you. And then you just come pick it up via curbside and you can go see the zoo for the month um, for free. Um, during the election, we had our Vote Smarter series. Um, we did a, a series of um, programs just focusing on um, election research, voter information. Um, we partnered with the League of Women Voters who went through all the ballot measures um, and the librarian, one of the librarians at HSU to go over how to do research on local politicians and local um, propositions and kind of doing some information resources. And all of this is saved on our um, YouTube channel. So if you're interested, you can always go back and check it there. And then another thing we did at the end of last year was um, drive through community flu vaccination clinics. Um, you know, we really want to make sure our community is safe. And so we've been working with public health on ways that we can kind of help create um, access to things like flu shots and stuff like that. So um, we're really trying to work with our community to meet our community in a variety of ways, not just in terms of books, but all sorts of um, outlets. And then we also have reference assistance. So normally when we were open, you could walk in, walk up to the reference librarian. If you had a question, we'd help you find um, answers to your questions, help you find you know, research materials, things like that. That is still available. 
it's just in a slightly different format. So now you can just call any library and um, we'll connect you with a reference librarian and they'll help you the same way that we would be able to help you if we were sitting at the reference desk. Um, it's also available via an online form on our website. So go back to homelib.org. And click on the same button that you clicked on to get an e account. You can also, there's an option to make a comment or ask a library question. If you click on this, you can just ask your question, or if you have a comment, type that in here, click submit. And what this does is um, and let us know if you want an answer or not. Sometimes you just have a, a comment and then you can send it to us. Um, but if you have a question and you need an answer, click yes and click submit. And what this does is it gets emailed to our um, staff of reference librarians and someone will get back to you. So this is um, a really good resource if you have a question, especially if you have a question during time, you know, days that were closed or late at night when we're not open and you don't want to forget your question, just email it to us and we'll get back to you. And as always, all of this, everything I've talked about, you can find on the website, humlib.org. Um, like I showed you, you can access our catalog, you can access our databases, we've got our calendar on there, our contact information. Um, we've got a lot of great stuff on our website, so I would recommend just kind of poking around on there and seeing what you can find. And of course, you can always just give us a call. Um, so for the library main branch, our phone number is 707-269-1915. We're open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 5. Um, and if you have a question and don't feel like calling or it's outside of our open hours, you can always email us. Um, our email is hcl, so it says for Humboldt County Library, at co.humboldt.ca.us. Go ahead and shoot us an email and we'll give you a, a call back or an email back and we'll try to get um, back in contact with you. So, you know, we are here to help you. Anytime you have a question or you're trying to access OverDrive or anything like that, give us a call. That's what we're here for. And hopefully, we can find ways to help connect with you during this time. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. And thank you for watching. Thanks.